Hey guys, and welcome to Method's Challenge Mode Guide for Shadow Moon Burial Grounds. I'm Chris Potter, and here with me as always is Zirps. Hey guys. As with all of our CM guides, we're not going to do anything super tryhard or any crazy exploits. We're just going to show you a really simple way to get through the dungeon. So for this first pack here, the Bow Mender is the mob to take keynote of. He does this cast called Shadow Mend, and it's really important to interrupt that, otherwise he's going to heal all the mobs. You want to be careful where you're standing as well because they do a melee cleave and the caster will also put out a debuff on players and you want your healer to dispel that ace up. So coming up to here, you want to look where that mob is patrolling and then sneak past on that other side, sticking close to the wall. And when you get here, you're going to have four casters and depending on your timing, you might also have a big void mob as well. If the void mob is on the side that you go to, you can choose to just wait for it to despawn and it makes it a lot easier. So these casters are really easy, they only do this big void orb spell, which is only really dangerous for melee, you might have seen just wait there dropping quite low, but for range it's really simple to avoid that. We had syrups run off and pull these little spiderlings while we were just finishing off those mobs, it just saves a little bit of time, it's not needed or anything, it just saves us a couple of seconds. So when we jump down here, as always with this kind of thing, you need to dismiss your pets. Otherwise, they're going to run around and pull the entire instance, and then your group is going to be pretty bad at you. These spiderlings down here as well, you can choose to take them with you if you want to use them for a DPS increase, if you have some class that gains things from it, but we just kill them off. Now in this pack, we have a Bowmender, again, and three mobs. The Bowmender, again, needs to be interrupted as much as possible in the Shadow Mend, as well as his other spell, just because you want to reduce the damage you take. The debuff needs to be dispelled as well, and you can see Skull actually takes quite a lot of damage here. So you do want to stun and keep up on those interrupts because your tank can die here if you're a bit unlucky or someone doesn't play that well. You also want to be a bit aware here of your cooldowns because the first boss is coming up and you just want to make sure that you have as many cooldowns as possible for the first boss. Yeah, and now finishing off that pack, we're gonna make our way to the first boss of the instance. And what we wanna do here is to use Lost, because it's gonna be back up for the last boss again. So that's what we wanna do. You wanna keep an eye out for these runes here you see on the side. Don't walk over them, because they will either put you on 1 HP or actually just kill you. So here, the boss is gonna do his first ability, which is some daggers from the, from the air. You wanna move away from them, and you wanna move the boss to one side of the room, so that the ad is gonna spawn the other. Here he casts his AoE, which is called Whispers of the Darkstar. And it just does a decent amount of damage to everyone in the, in the group. So just try and heal it up, nothing too major. He's gonna cast his ad. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna put down a binding and just slow it, stun it, whatever you do, and kill it off fast. If it reaches the boss, it's gonna heal. And you really don't want that happening because the boss is gonna take forever and you're gonna have so many daggers in the room that it's literally gonna be impossible for you. And here he's going to cast his last ability, which is called Dark Eclipse. This Dark Eclipse means that you need to get a rune here. As you can see, everyone gets a rune. If you don't get a rune, you're going to be left really low HP or even possibly die. So make sure you have a rune, because right afterwards he's going to cast Whisper of the Dark Star again. Try and have a big healing CD up here or use health tonics. It's really useful. Here comes the last ad. We simply just try and stun it and nuke the boss. After the boss, we make our way up to the next room, and here we have some really annoying trash. The enslavers are gonna continuously cast this fixate thing, which is targeted, and you need to interrupt it. Even if you can't see a cast bar, you need to interrupt them, because it's literally the only thing they do. So keeping them interrupted and stacked up prevents anyone dying, and it just makes it much easier and cleaner. Once they're stacked up, AoE stuns and AoE silences is really good. Because it can drop your tank or even a DPS down really fast and you'll just simply wipe. After finishing off the first pack, we're going to move down and there's going to be two exhumers here. Once you engage them, they're going to have a cast, and if you don't stun it while it's casting, they're going to spawn two adds. Here, we try something, we try to put down a binding and knock it, but it's not knockable. <laughs> not really the optimal way to do it. So we get two adds. 
The Exhume itself only has one ability, which is the Void Bolt. And you just want to keep that interrupted as much as possible to avoid any additional damage and simply just cleave them down with the two adds that spawned. The two adds doesn't really do anything by themselves, they just melee the tank, but they have a lot of health, so they can be quite annoying. And here we pull the last one, we're gonna get two adds again, which is yeah, just really annoying, but we try to manage. Here, before you get to the second buff instance, you want to keep right here and jump over this little ledge here so you don't accidentally go over the runes and pull them up that you don't need. So with this boss here, you want to use all your DPS cooldowns on the pool like normal. And your boss DPS actually matters on this boss because if you can kill him quick enough, you will actually miss out on the hardest part of the fight. Boss does the Void Blast spell, which is just the channel on the tank, and it does a considerable amount of damage. As long as your tank and healer are paying attention, though, it, it shouldn't really be a problem. And when the boss does his planner shift, he basically blinks out to a ranged player, and then he'll cast his Void Vortex, sucking people in and dealing damage. You want to kind of spread out and just make sure he's not jumping on too many people. Here he does his Soul Stain ability. And he's going to put everyone into a separate phase, in their own individual phase, and you'll have this possessed soul ad you can kill. To get out, you need to kill the ad, and then right click the ad, and this will take you back into the other phase. And you're going to get a big damage buff for about 18 seconds. You'll see Sko drops quite low here, because while you're in the other phase, you actually can't get healed by the healer. So your healer needs to make sure everyone's on high HP before that comes, just so they don't die in the other phase. And everyone else needs to make sure they get out quick enough. Now this Void Devastation is the spell I was talking about earlier that you can skip if you have enough DPS. You can see the boss is dying now. Basically these Void Zones will fall from the sky and they deal a lot of damage if you stand in it. A real ton of damage. So make sure you're moving out of them really first. Now with this next pack, you'll see again we have Exhumers and we also have Enslavers. We want to stun that Exhumer, which we do, so we don't get the extra adds. And these Enslavers, they want to be interrupted and stunned as much as possible. Again, having a DK tank here would be really nice for the mass grip. But as long as people use their stunts and interrupts well, it's still really easy to do. You'll also notice there's an Exuma patrolling in the back of the room, which we accidentally pull here. And he also will do the Exuma Crypts, but luckily Zerips was very alert and he blinked forward and bashed him before he could get the cast out. Again, just wanted to finish off these low ads because they do do a lot of damage, so the quicker you kill them, for the pillars. Now we have a little run down to the next pack. We use Stampede and Roar just to get down a bit quicker. You can also use gliders and things like that. Now in this pack there's a ton of little spiderlings, a big spider and two plague bats. The spiderlings are really harmless and they're not too much trouble at all. Just A with them down. And the giant spider actually has two casts to watch out for. The first is called Necrotic Burst. And the second is called Death Venom. And they're both quite dangerous abilities, so you want to kill them off and interrupt them. The Plague Bats as well, they do a debuff stacking on the tank. Just make sure that you kill the bats quickly. You don't want your tank having too many debuffs for too long, otherwise it can take quite hard. Now going down here you'll see I dismissed my pet. This isn't needed but it's just for extra safety because it's really really important that you don't pull the mobs on the other side here. You want to stick to the left wall when you run in here and then kill the mobs on that side. Here again we have two big spiders and small spiderlings. Exactly the same as before, interrupt the cast. You'll see right there though that just where he does use chi burst in the wrong direction and we do get the extra spiders. And this is really really bad. This could actually easily be a wipe. But luckily we don't wipe here. Zerips has Tree of Life ready, so he pumps out a lot of healing, and we basically try and interrupt as much as possible and kill them off as quickly as possible here. This can be easily a wipe here, but we do manage to get through it. You really, really don't want to pull those two extra spiders on the side. 
Try and avoid them if you can. You can see when the necrotic burst goes through, it's quite a lot of damage on the group. But yeah, we do manage to survive that pool. Everyone did play quite well to overcome that bad ninja pool by just wait, so we we're able to continue. Now on this bridge, when you walk across, a giant carrion worm is going to spawn. And he basically just does his body slam, and it's really easy to avoid, just don't stand at it. Flying around the room is going to be this Plague Bats, and they basically do a giant patrol, just flying around the whole room. And if they're close when you're killing the worm, just pull them with the worm and AUE them down on top of the worm. The Plague Bats are again doing the debuff on the tank, and there's a lot more of them this time. They're a lot more dangerous than the worm, so just focus on AUEing, and the worm actually goes away at 30%, he doesn't die. But on the second half of the bridge, again the worm will come up. This time you only have to deal with the worm. So all you have to do is not stand in the body slam. Really simple. There aren't any bats flying around here. And this sort of just gives you a moment to calm yourselves and have your cooldowns and trinkets and stuff ready for the boss fight that's coming up. If you do get knocked down by the body slam, what you need to do is just swim to one of the whirlpools in the water and they will just knock you back up onto the platform. And before we engage this boss, we're going to make sure that I have some mana so we can actually survive it. And on this boss, it's good to mention that you should only pre-pot and not pot in combat, because we want to end this pot afterwards. The first ability the boss has is its Corpse Breath, which will basically spawn a puddle on the ground, which will slow you and prevent you from getting inhaled into the boss's mouth and knocked into the water. Here we see the second one is the Body Slam. Don't stand that. If you stand that, you get knocked down from the platform and you have to make your way back up. So here we get the second corpse breath and we make sure to spawn it really close to melee so that the melee don't have to move all the way out to stand on it so they don't get inhaled. As mentioned before, if you actually get inhaled, you get thrown into the water and you need to find your way all the way to a pool which might take you 10-12 seconds, which is really not optimal because you want to have as much deeps as possible. Here we see the ash from before appearing. I even get knocked down here even though I don't think I'm standing in it but yeah, I guess that's unlucky. And we have two hunters standing really close to these worms, because if you don't have that, they might target the same target and simply just one-shot him. So here again, the second inhale is incoming. People make sure to stand in the puddles so we don't get knocked down. And I'm a bit behind healing here, but we managed to keep alive. I don't know how. I think it's only Rector who dies because he gets meleeed by the worm on the side. Boss really low here. We gotta finish it off. And that's his PC done. Again, when you invis, make sure you dismiss your pet. Don't use any abilities while you're invis. And we get a roar here so we can get past this pack. Going up here, we have two void spawns. What you want to do is to nuke one down and interrupt the other one. We kind of f***ed up a bit because we split DPS. We wanted to nuke one down and then let the other one cast. But what we did, we had one DPS on one and two on the other, which is really not optimal. We interrupt everything on the right one and then keep the left one interrupted once and then let it cast. That's really not how you want to do it. As I said before, you want to focus one down and just try and interrupt the other one as much as possible. But we don't wipe here, we actually manage, luckily enough. And then we have the last boss. So, after you skip the cutscene and you fall down here, be actually really careful that you don't cast any blinks or disengages or anything like that. I have seen a couple of times where a player has blinked and they've actually gone through the platform and died. And then they weren't able to join us for the boss fight and we actually didn't make the gold timer. So don't do that. It is a bit risky. Now, Nazole is actually a really easy boss fight. You see his first ability there, Malevolence. It just places it on the tank and does that giant cone. And it does a lot of damage if you stand in it. It'll probably one-shot most DPS. If you do manage to survive standing in it, you're also going to get a damage reduction buff, causing you to do less damage. 
Here you see we get the Wall of Death, and there's tons of these mobs on there, the Ritual of Bones, and you want to kill one of them to give you a path to escape through. You see that we chose to kill one of the middle mobs, and that's because if it gets close to the boss, you can cleave off there and sort of min-max DPS. You want to be careful here that your tank is facing malevolence away from the group during this time because your room is a bit restricted, so just be wary of that. The boss is also going to be spawning these pillars around the room on range players' locations, and they do a lot of damage to the raid or to the group. And the damage is basically scaling higher if you're closer to them, and if you're further away, it doesn't do as much damage. So that's why we place them right at the edges of the room, just to maximize the amount of free room we have in the fight. This boss is really, really simple. We do get a second wall here. It's always safe just to kill the mob in the wall to create a space to get through. Don't try and nuke the boss or anything, otherwise you could have a really sad wipe. You should communicate with your team who's going to mark a mob. As I said, we recommend doing one of the middle mobs. And yeah, that's the dungeon complete. Very easy. And that concludes our guide for Shadow Moon Burial Grounds. We hope you found it useful. As always, we like feedback from you guys and we appreciate it if you can like and subscribe. And we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye guys. Bye guys.